All right, guys, it's uh, Torino coming back at you again for the second video. I'm going to talk about uh, the fight with uh, Pacquiao and De La Hoya now that it's over. Uh, I'll talk about what I, what I thought. Uh, I'm glad that I was lucky enough to be able to call it correctly. Uh, but I said split decision. I had no idea that Manny was going to be able to deliver a TKO like he did. I would never have guessed that... Uh, that he could have done what he did. I thought that at least Oster uh, could have used that good jab of his to keep Manny at a distance uh, for uh, the entire duration of the fight. This station Fort Worth Intermodal Transportation Center. I'm on the train going going home, so uh, excuse the voices, if you will. Anyway, uh, so props to Manny. Grants to Manny for a fantastic fight. I think he really needs to fight Ricky Hatton. That's going to be the next, I really think it's going to be the next fight. It needs to happen. It's going to happen. Uh, there's just too much money to not be made for it to not happen. So uh, uh, that's that's probably going to be the next big fight in both of their fighters' career. Uh, and uh, I'll go out on a limb right now and say that uh, Manny will probably pull that one off too. Uh, I'm not going to say it's going to be about a TKO or a knockout. Uh, but what did I tell you about Ricky? Richland Hill. Sorry. Uh, so it, it's got to happen. It has to happen. Also, as far as uh, as far as Freddie Roach saying that he doesn't think Manny should go any higher in weight classes, well, really, uh, all we've seen Manny do over the past few years is go up in weight classes. And uh, if you watch the fight, uh, like I did, then you probably remember the. Uh, uh, the boxing announcers, Mandy Stewart and, uh, and uh, Jim Lampley, talking about this very thing. We don't have any reason to believe that Manny would not do wonderfully at a higher weight class, perhaps even up to 154. Yeah, he's short, but as we can see, it doesn't matter. Uh, the opposition, you can't get much better of a class in opposition. Well, you can than Oscar De La Hoya, but not much better. Uh, so I, I really think Manny would would dominate. I would love to see Manny fight Cotto. I'd like to see Manny fight Malinaji. Uh, and uh, and I think they'd all be good fights. And I think they'd be Manny victories. Uh, but a Manny uh, Manny Pacquiao uh, Ricky Hatton fight it should definitely be in the cards. Uh, having said that, uh, that's that's all I want to say about the. Uh, Pacquiao de la Hoya fight. Now, we do want to talk about some other things concerning boxing in general, things that are really starting to get on my nerves, and I think they piss off the average boxing fan, or at least a hardcore boxing fan like myself. And the uh, biggest thing, the biggest problem is uh, corrupt promoters. We, it's just got to stop. It's just got to stop. Guys like Aaron and uh, Godsev, which is St. Peter's uh, promoter, uh, and uh, I don't even have to mention Don King's name, I'm sure. Uh, we, we've got to root out the corruption. We've got to make it fair for these other boxers that some of us fans don't know anything about. There are so many fighters out there that have fantastic records that we don't know about, or that we know very little about, because they don't have the right promoters, because they don't have the right, uh, the right backing. Uh, I don't know what it would take to get to get rid of all the all the boxing corruption. Well, I do know what it would take. What it would take uh, would be uh, outside investigation. You know, but you know, not, but let's face it. You know, is that really going to happen? Uh, I mean, come on. When you have that kind of money to throw around, and and you have that kind of money to. Uh, by judges. We've all seen robberies. We've all seen judges give scores that are certainly not deserved to fighters. Uh, we've, we've, we've all seen these big robberies, and we know why they happen. We ha they happen because the judges are bought and paid for. It's as simple as that. But nobody says anything about it. The boxing fans keep buying tickets. You know, if we if we got mad and said, you know what, that's it, uh, I'm not paying for another goddamn ticket for as long as I until this is fixed, uh, that would maybe make a difference. Unless those, once the purses started shrinking, 
and uh, there wasn't so much money to be made, well, then maybe they would they would listen. But we know that, especially with Don King's involved, you know, a prime example uh, is uh, the Lehman Brewster Vladimir Klitschko fight. I'm so sick and tired of people talking about Vladimir Klitschko having a glass chin. He does, he does not have a glass chin. There's nothing glass about Klitschko's chin. When he fought Samuel Peter, Samuel Peter clocked him with a right hook, or a left hook, and caught him good. Klitschko shook it off and kept fighting. When Klitschko fought Brewster the first time, and his second fight should be a testament to what I'm about to say, but when Klitschko fought Brewster the first time, uh, and incidentally, these are these are my opinions. If you don't like them, if you don't agree with them, then that's, that's your loss. That's your fault. You can think what you want to think, but this is how I feel. Klitschko was obviously, something was wrong with him. You know, there were so many things that were just not right. The referee of the fight, had, he said, after the fight, he said, I've never seen a man so exhausted that he couldn't, and this was only after five rounds. The man had to help Vladimir from the mat. Okay? Something happened here. And when you've got a promoter like Don King, who was back in Lehman Brewster and Vaughn, you know goddamn well that something's going to happen. Or, or, or that it's possible, at least. And for someone to say, well, this is possible for something like this to happen with professional boxing. I think you know what it is. Uh, and this is a good testament. The second time they fought, they, they Klitschko pounded him and pounded him and pounded him, and pounded him which is what he did when they, first, when they fought the first time, up until whatever it was that was given to him suck in. You can't tell me that a man in his kind of shape with over 200-something fights, let's not forget his amateur career, made such a rookie mistake as to just not pace himself and wear himself out. This bullshit didn't happen. He was drunk. Uh, speaking of the Klitschko's, uh, and something I'm tired of hearing about, or more specifically a boxer I'm sick and tired of hearing from, is David Hay. David Hay is, God help him, he's, he's a self-promoter, and he knows where the money's at, and he, when he fights Batali, because I don't think there's a... There's no doubt now that anybody in anybody's mind that there's going to be a fight. When he fights Vitaly, it's probably going to be his last fight. And if it's not his last fight, period, it will be his last fight as a decent fighter because Vitaly is going to ruin him. Uh, last thing I want to talk about, and hopefully I've done this within 10 minutes' time, is that uh, we need more gentlemen in the sport. We really? need people who, and I'm talking to you, Zab Judah, I'm talking to you, Charmaine Mitchell, I'm talking to you, James Tony. We don't need thug boxers, we don't need boxers who talk smack, Samuel Peter ripping the belt out of Vitaly's hands. What is that bullshit? We need a child? We need more gentlemen boxers in the sport. One of the problems with boxing, one of the reasons uh, it's not generating a lot of new fans the way other sports are it's because they see bullshit like this and it, it doesn't paint a good picture for our sport you know we we need people who are respectful like Lehman Brewster he's the coolest dude you've never seen him bad enough anybody that's what we need and so I'm done uh, from the train headed to Fort Worth Texas this is Torino coming at you see you next time